Music from Historic Houses. The BBC presents a series in which you'll hear music associated with and played in the stately homes of Britain. In this programme, we visit Woburn Abbey, the home of the Duke of Bedford. Your guides are Richard Dimbleby and Dennis Stevens. In the open, rolling country, 40 miles to the northwest of London, is the great estate known as Woburn Abbey, more correctly called Woburn, which for over four centuries has belonged to the noble family of Russell, earls and later dukes of Bedford. Outside the house, the immense park with its lakes and open glades and splendid trees and magnificent views over the countryside is one of the glories of English landscape. In the Middle Ages, a small Cistercian abbey stood on the spot. But like all other English monasteries, it was dissolved under Henry VIII, and its last abbot was hanged for his criticism of the king's marriage to Anne Boleyn. The estate remained in the king's own hands, to be left at his death as a reward to one of his executors, John Russell, Lord Privy Seal, who later became the first earl. Four earls and thirteen dukes have held the estate, and most of them have played a prominent part in the affairs of England. Nine of the seventeen have been Knights of the Garter. Connected by marriage with many other noble families, and inheritors of many estates in London and in remote counties as well as at Woburn, the Russells were able in the course of time to build at Woburn one of the most remarkable of private palaces in England, and to fill it with treasures of art. Not only has the Russell family been famous in the political history of the country, many of its members have been outstanding as patrons of art, as agriculturalists and as naturalists. The present Duke of Bedford, writing about his ancestors, has also emphasised their eccentricities and their individuality of character, seen in their courageous espousal of unpopular causes. Sadly, of the whole line, only one distinguished himself as a lover and a patron of music and musicians. This was Ryardsley, the second duke, who succeeded in 1700 and died 11 years later at the age of 32. Notwithstanding this short career, he had time to befriend several musicians at a time when English music was in danger of falling into obscurity after the death of Purcell. A pupil of Purcell, John Weldon, organist of the Chapel Royal, owed to the Duke's interest a great part of his advancement. When Weldon carried off the first prize in a musical competition with his opera, The Judgment of Paris, the Duke of Bedford had it performed at the theatre in Lincoln's Inn Fields in 1702. Weldon was never in the Duke's service, but others were, including the singular figure of Dr. James Sherard. Sherard was a botanist and an expert on gardening and in that quality he was concerned with the agricultural and scientific pursuits of the Russell family. But he was also a gifted violinist and composer. He specialised in chamber music, notably trio sonatas, one of which is being played now.
As a young man, Ryardsley spent some time in Rome, where he first developed a taste for Italian painting and music, especially the music of Corelli and his pupils. One of the most gifted of these was a violinist and composer named Nicola Cosimo, who often played for the Duke at private dinner parties. And Cosimo dedicated to his noble patron a set of sonatas for violin and harpsichord. These appeared in 1702, when the Duke returned to England, bringing with him Cosimo as a member of his musical establishment at Woburn. Dr. Burney, the first English musical historian, says that these sonatas have considerable merit, and the third of the set, in A major, amply bears out his judgment.
Yet another member of the Duke's musical circle was Nicola Francesco Haim, by Bertha Roman, as was the violinist Cosimo. Haim added an overture and several songs to one of the most popular of Alessandro Scarlatti's operas, Pyrrhus and Demetrius, which was performed with great success at the Haymarket Theatre in 1708. Sir John Hawkins goes so far as to say that Haim's additions are distinguished from Scarlatti's original songs by their superior excellence. And this opinion is confirmed by newspaper reports of the time. One of Haim's songs is quoted by Hawkins as an example of the composer's talent for dramatic music. Too lovely, cruel, fair.
That song by Heim was one of the Duke's favourite pieces of music and must often have been performed at Wuben. Another much admired song from the same opera, Pyrrhus and Demetrius, was Gentle Sighs A While Relieve Us. Besides his musical talents, Heim was well known as an expert on coins and medals. He was the author of a book on the subject in Italian and English. He wrote two tragedies and published an excellent illustrated edition of Tasso's epic poem, Jerusalem Delivered. He announced in 1730 a two-volume history of music, but this was apparently never published owing to lack of support. As a composer, however, he continued to enjoy public acclaim as well as the private patronage of Ryothsley, second Duke of Bedford. Here is one of his overtures.
been listening to a program in the series Music from Historic Houses. The music was given by Eile McNabb, soprano, Sidney Humphreys and Charles Spinks and the Aeolian String Quartet. Your guides were Richard Dimbleby and Dennis Stevens. The historical research was by John Harvey and the program was recorded at Woburn Abbey by the BBC Transcription Service.